It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's The Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden, and this is a Tuesday midweek edition of 5.45 Live. Uh, let's take a look at what's coming up tonight. Uh, we'll talk about Harris Hill, all the buzz around town for uh, this weekend. Break down some more of the Winter Carnival as well with the uh, Brat Figure Skating Club Ice Show. And there's some new drug laws coming out of the House Judiciary Committee that could affect uh, what the governor's dubbed a prescription opiate abuse epidemic uh, here in Vermont. All that and more. The goal to do it in 15 minutes or maybe even a little bit less. So stick with us. We're right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this February 19th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. That's footage of 545 Live senior news correspondent Daryl Pillsbury, uh, who also heads up the Wyndham County Heat Fund, talking about uh, the need. Is anyone who's been outside can feel the sting of that cold weather for those who have to make the choice between affording food and affording heat. Uh, this time of year poses a, uh, a particularly tragic uh, time for that decision making. Uh, he, you can contact Daryl at 802-254-4285 to uh, find out how to donate. Again, as he mentioned, uh, 100% of that money is going to go to to buying heat. They actually, uh, he and uh, Richard Davis, who put this program together in 2006, um, they actually take that money. They'll call up uh, the fuel distributor themselves and uh, just pay them to take the gas right to the person's house. They do all the uh, administrative components of it for free. So again, 100% of that money, uh, that much needed money, uh, will go to keeping local folks warm. All right, we'll jump into the stories here with uh, the buzz locally being Harris Hill's 90th Annual International Ski Jumping Competition, which included skiers from all around the world and taking their shot at the uh, airspace in Cedar Street. Uh, now that's uh, mountains, the home of dozens of record-breaking jumps. And the Hill has continued its mission to put our fair city on the international stage. It's also provided my 545 Live content specialists, Joe Bushy and Daryl Pillsbury, a perfect opportunity for a special edition of their program, The Pulse of Brattleboro. Uh, and it also gave our uh, content specialist and rising star, M. Richards, a chance to get out there and experiment with some videography as well. She provided us some of the uh, gorgeous HD footage that we're going to see right now. Footage courtesy of content specialist M. Richards from this weekend's Harris Hill Ski Jumping event. Let's take a look at uh, some of the uh, results here from the FIS Pepsi Challenge. Uh, and for that, uh, we'll jump right in. New Hampshire's Andover Outing Club took two of the top three in the Pepsi Challenge with Chris Lamb uh, taking his 96 and a half foot jump, uh, 96 and a half meter jump all the way to payday. And Yu Yu Yamanda picking up a second place spot for Japan. Full results, photos, and more uh, can be found at Harris Hill Ski Jump, all one word, dot com. Uh, and of course, that Harris Hill. Uh, part of the Winter Carnival, which kicks uh, off here in February in Brattleboro every year. Uh, included in that is the Brattleboro Figure Skating Club's Ice Show at the Nelson Withington Skating Rink. And content specialist Deborah Lazar was there to gather uh, interviews and footage of the performance for a special broadcast here. Uh, now, the uh, press release for this event, titled Love is in the Air, reads something like this. Uh, the annual Brattleboro Figure Skating Club's Ice Show presents uh, the Brattleboro Figure Skating Club's skaters and special guest skaters, such as uh, the 2013 USA Nationals Juvenile Champion Maxim Naumov. Hopefully I said that somewhere close to right. Uh, at any rate, we've got uh, the special here from uh, Debbie. Let's take a look. <laughs> The Barber Figure Skating Club does an annual show. We have been practicing for the show since October. 
a lot of us have gotten really close. It's so much fun to get to know everybody here, and it's just fun to skate with everyone, too. All our winter carnival footage, of course, can be found at brattlebrotv.org uh, as it unfolds through the rest of this month, and our videographers uh, unveil uh, their programming. All right, uh, let's continue here with the stories for a moment, and for that we'll go back into the newsroom. Uh, it's become synonymous with epidemic in the governor's vernacular, and with the second uh, largest, second highest rate of prescription opiate addiction in the country. Uh, Vermont is sure to see some drastic moves in Montpelier, including new legislation the House Judiciary Committee hopes will limit the practice known as doctor shopping, a method of drug seeking employed by users and dealers who attempt often successfully to glean prescriptions for opiate uh, potent medications like OxyContin from multiple doctors across a wide area. Uh, we're joined by uh, Wyndham 5 rep from uh, Newfane, Dick Merrick, who's on the House Judiciary Committee, uh, to talk a, a little bit about this uh, piece of legislation, uh, what it means uh, for Vermonters here. Uh, and he joins us from uh, behind the iPad lens, uh, which is courtesy of Wyndham 4 rep Mike Merwicki, who's been doing his broadcast, Montpelier Connection, uh, from the State House using that there iPad. So, Mike, thanks for setting this up. Let's get into the uh, split screen here so we can really see what's going on here. Uh, I know time is very short up there, so uh, break it down for us on some of this legislation for what's become a, a, a pretty overwhelming problem here in the state. Well, I think as you articulated, opioids are the biggest substance abuse problem in the state, probably except for alcohol, which we tend to forget is a drug, and we've worked on my committee uh, very substantially on DUI issues over the years. We've also worked on a whole range of, of drug-related issues. Uh, opioids are, are prescription drugs uh, by and large. Uh, there's also heroin, but heroin actually tends to be a relatively limited problem in, in Vermont. Well, and of course, Mike, uh, you will be uh, getting us some more broadcasts, uh, full interviews, including one you're about to do here, if uh, I just let you go, get back to it. All right, thanks to uh, Dick Merrick and Mike Verwicki for joining us here. Now, some of the uh, Judiciary Committee hearings' most provocative sound bites include testimony from convicted dealers detailing street values as high as $2,400 per 30-pill uh, prescription, uh, to medical examiner testimony chronicling the rise of fatal overdose from prescription opiates, which is second only to automobile-related fatalities uh, in Vermont's accidental death rate. All right, moving on, uh, we'll check in with Vermont's tenured senator, Bernie Sanders. Now, uh, Democracy Now!'s Amy Goodman may have called it a radio silence during the 2012 presidential election, but Bernie has seen the global climate changes return to the spotlight. Last week, uh, he joined California's Barber Boxer in proposing what some could argue is a uh, relatively radical climate change bill at a press conference bedecked by the likes of Bill McKibben and Michael Bruhn. Uh, Sanders shared his predictions for the bleak global future a lack of extreme policy overhaul would usher in. Our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren are going to look back on this period in history and ask a very simple question. Where were they? Why didn't the United States of America, the most powerful nation on earth, lead the international community in cutting greenhouse gas emissions and preventing the devastating damage that the scientific community was sure would come. All right, a few more things uh, to wrap up here before I book it back up to BCTV's 230 Main Street uh, studios to help uh, get ready for the Brattleboro Select Board meeting, which will be brought to you with live HD3 camera coverage. Uh, just two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10, at 6.15 uh, 6 p.m. tonight. And it does look like it could be a contentious meeting tonight. There's plenty of classic items like the Downtown Improvement District skate park uh, taxes. That includes a proposed local gas tax, the financial report, town plan, and, assort and an assortment of uh, others. But before tonight's meeting, let's get you caught up on the board's previous go-round 14 days ago. Uh, we're in items like the police and fire facility, as well as dealing alcohol during gallery walk, where hot topics. Let's take a gander go at our select board recap. You run into issues if the statute isn't defined enough. 
this is a joke uh, in terms of what it requires uh, for individuals who, who wish to serve alcohol. I understand the concerns that are being expressed, but the legislature has adopted this statute. It's a double-edged sword, the opportunity to have full participation in the downtown organization. If you don't think that there are benefits, then what are the benefits actually of having a DID? And then is this all a moot conversation? Live select board coverage tonight, but as municipal happenings go, uh, I'll take the chance to remind everybody that town meeting day is not that far away. March 5th, Tuesday, March 5th, uh, BCTV will send seven camera crews out into the surrounding communities uh, to gather uh, town meeting footage from every one of the towns in our service territory. That'll include Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Jamaica, and Townsend. And we'll get all those uh, turned around for you to get them up online uh, and on our channel uh, Wednesday and Thursday. We'll put uh, all those meetings up. Now, uh, it's uh, I'm not the only one who's already talking about it at last night's uh, Townsend Select Board meeting. Uh, the board discussed a number of concerns. I think we should go through this list of things, maybe, and pick out things that people feel prepared to talk about. All right, just a few things uh, to wrap up here. Let's uh, head back into the newsroom and uh, throw on another over-the-shoulder graphic for this next one here. All right, aiding in the removal of landmines may not be an issue close to home, uh, but uh, for one of the deadliest remnants of the Vietnam War, uh, it's proven a deeply personal cause for a group of Brattleboro Union High School students who've begun a fundraising effort to improve living conditions for one victim still suffering the effects of a near-fatal brush with one of the thousands of mines still buried in Vietnam's Quang Tri province. Uh, and through the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund project known as RENEW, or the Restoring the Environment and Neutralizing the Effects of War project, uh, have already delivered to the province $1,000 and are preparing to ramp up their community awareness and fundraising efforts. And they've also posted uh, some videos online as well, uh, of which one we'll uh, cut into now. We donated to give um, a prosthetic limb to two different victims of uh, unexploded ordinances that are over there. And um, my class really was impacted by what you guys did when you came in and you talked about what um, Renew is doing. And they said, what can we do? And I'm like, why don't we all just bring in five bucks? All right, now I uh, really have to go, but uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a chance to shamelessly promote a few of the things coming up on BCTV's two channels. Of course, you can find all the information on yourself. It may not include the fancy split screen I'm about to launch into, but uh, you can see uh, full program guides for both channels and find every one of our local programs to stream at your convenience uh, on our video on demand. That's all at rattlebrotv.org. Uh, and we're going to start by promoting today uh, the Northern Roots uh, Festival's trip to oh, McNeil's Brewery. And BCTV is proud to welcome uh, to our extensive list of church services broadcasting on BCTV the First Baptist the Church. The United States of America is not Serbia, where it is estimated that an average family needs 450 douche marks a week on which to live. All right, my internal clock is uh, screaming at me almost as loud as the big giant clock on the wall behind this camera I'm looking at right now, telling me it's time to sign off. So thanks to everybody that makes 545 Live tick the way it does, including content specialist M. Richards, who was out on the uh, very cold Harris Hill ski slopes to get some of that fantastic footage we were looking at, and uh, Deborah Lazar, who was at the Brattleboro Figure Skating Club's annual ice show, and everybody else that makes 545 Live tick the way it does, including you viewers out there who uh, give us a chance to show off some of what uh, BCTV is all about. I'm Roland Boyden. Night, everybody. There's always a different theme. Last year it was a movie. No, it was a movie. Yeah, yeah the movie, and this year is Love is in the Air. Amelia, I'm getting interviewed.